Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. He hung up on me. <laughs> well, enjoy that tonight. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back to the One and a Half White Guys podcast, or more solicited white guy opinions on movies. Uh, I'm Nathan, your long legs. And I'm Nick, your baby legs. <laughs> God damn it, baby legs. I'm giving you a partner. <laughs> oh, God. You do have long legs. I do, I do. I am, I'm the taller one. You're tall. Yeah, yeah. So uh, this is, again, kind of an informal one. We are doing a movie that has just come out, actually, I think like a week ago. As of a couple t- weeks ago. A week or two. A week or two re- ago. As, as, of this rele- as of this releasing. Releasing. We'll Recording date's been a little, little about a week. That's the 2024 highly anticipated Osgood Perkins movie, Long legs. Now, if you've had a chance to see this, hopefully it's uh, stuck with you as much as it did us. Uh, There's a lot to go in. There's a lot layered into this movie. Trailers for this movie looked very, very interesting. And, And I told people this is either going to be a heavily stylized fun movie or the greatest trailer edits you've ever seen in your life, yeah. <laughs> where absolutely nothing happens in the real movie and you're disappointed. Trailers are not the movie. Trailers are not the movie. Trailers are not the movie. This one... More so, kind of is thankfully highly, highly anticipated because the marketing for this was it, it was pretty genius. Yeah, I believe this takes place officially in the nineties, nineteen ninety three, nineteen ninety three. But it does have a very seventies feel to it, especially with parts of it taking place in the nineteen seventies. We are getting kind of this like string of seventies movies, like Late Night with the Devil, and yeah, a little bit. Well, especially with the satanic. Aspect of yeah, it. yeah, yeah. We do, have, we do have to go ahead and right here now. We are going to spoil parts of this movie. This is the spoiler warning right here. If you want to, you know, see this and not have it spoiled, click off. Or you know what? We'll we'll, we'll give another point where we start to really get into it. But we can kind of introduce some basic stuff and uh, the actors and stuff like that. You have been warned. But you have been warned. But regardless, this has been a kind of an anticipated movie. I was very excited to see this one. Nick, again, was excited. I, I, think wanted, we, I wanted to see this. He, he said we should see this. He, he This was on your radar for a while, I think you said. Probably since like the teasers, because every teaser was just really vague. Cryptic. Cryptic and vague is a good yeah. way to put it. it, it but uh, eventually what came out about it was that, oh, it's a serial killer punting movie. Yeah. And then the closer it got, the we got a more coherent trailer out of it. And that trailer was a fairly well done creepy trailer. It feels very uh, Silence of the Lambs. This is very much the yeah, it's a at its at its core, it's a genre movie. Yeah. It is like you could really fit this with Seven and Silence of the Lambs. Yeah, I yeah think. this is very Jodie Foster, a lot of it. <laughs> <laughs> um which is not like a diss to the movie no, itself. No, like no, it's no. there's there's like it's unique, but it has element. I mean, ever, nothing's ever nothing new is under the sun ever. Really. No, not it's really. all influences of something else. I mean, Nicolas Cage is never under the sun in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. I'm sorry. We're going to we're gonna have to talk about that. But reg- about regardless that. of anything, this has elements of 90s horror. This has elements, a lot of 70s horror in mm-hmm. this in this as well. And it, it was a lot of fun, I think, for both of us to watch. And we'll plot wise, I, I was fine with it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, style wise, I was in love with it. Oh, style. It looks amazing. Uh, performance wise, I was what a roller coaster. What a fucking roller coaster. <laughs> and uh, that's where the fun is. I well, think. we'll go into a little bit of that. Nick, would you like to? Well, actually, let me formally introduce the movie. We are doing Long Legs, released in 2024. It's a neon, neon picture. Neon picture. It's a neon picture, not that A24 or uh, Blumhouse. <laughs> Neon. Can you imagine if Blumhouse made this? Oh, God. What is it? Infinity Pool is that Neon? Dude, I don't remember what Neon's done. I'm sorry. They did Crimes of the Future, which isn't a horror. Well, it's the it's a Cronenberg horror. Cronin. It's a body horror. And they did Infinity Pool. They also <laughs> did that one with Sydney Sweeney, Immaculate. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we are doing Long Legs, released in 2024 by Neon, starring the girl that got the worst venereal disease of all time ever in It Follows. <laughs> As Lee Harker, if she she was in a <laughs> she was in it follows as the girl that gets followed. I want to say it's Maka. Maka, Maka Monroe. Yeah, okay. Mark from Deep Impact as Agent Carter. Oh yeah, <laughs> I recognize. That's the only type play I, I ever recognized this guy from. I was like, isn't that guy from Deep Impact? That's Blair Underwood, the redheaded girl from Hollywood that Chris bangs after he hits John Favreau with a gun in Sopranos as. <laughs> 
Lee Harker, sorry, as Ruth Harker, that's Lee Harker's mom. That's Alicia Witt. <laughs> Alicia Witt, if you remember, she's the girl that's like the development girl that Chris is in the, I think it's in the second, first or second season. Chris is like, I want to sell my my movie to, to Hollywood. And then he ends up meeting John Favreau, who's shooting a movie in New York, along with Alicia Witt as his like personal assistant. So then he bangs her like multiple times. And then she's like, thank you for giving me your story. Fuck you. And leaves. Uh, you know, what Alicia Witt also um, well known for in a couple Queen, I think one or two Queen Latifah movies. The Last Holiday. She just shows up in it. She's in that. Yeah. Yeah. So Crystal showed me that. And I was like, is that the girl from Sopranos? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You would know. Yeah, I would know. <laughs> It's the first. So she's in, she's in one episode of Sopranos. So uh, that's that's where I remember her. Right she is Ruth Harker, uh, Lee Harker's mom. And finally, the Cage Rage himself, Nick Cage, as long legs. Yeah, or the newcomer who just, you know, established himself uh, in that movie, The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent. Yeah, relatively unknown uh, actor, definitely. I'm glad he's getting some more roles. I would also say that he, I, this could be just Mark Boland's corpse <laughs> reanimated. Mark <laughs> Boland, it was the lead singer of T Rex, and T Rex is referenced a lot in this movie. Uh, they have photos of him on the wall behind Nick Cage while he's in the basement at points. They ha he's he's like everywhere. He's everywhere. <laughs> they have negative images of him places. And I was like, <laughs> is Mark Bolin the killer? Is Mark? Is this supposed to be Mark Bolin? <laughs> Did Oz Perkins make this and then Mark Bolin's ghost just got a hold of it in the editing room? <laughs> or is is he saying that Mark Bolin was a serial killer? <laughs> I can't tell. I don't know. It, let us know, Oz Good Perkins. Come on the podcast. <laughs> Come on the podcast and let us know if he, if he if he was a serial killer and somehow you knew. Uh, so that's Long Legs. That's the cast. Uh, you want to go ahead and read the IMDb summary? Well, the summary follows as in pursuit of a serial killer, an FBI agent uncovers a series of occult clues that she must solve to end his terrifying killing spree. That's the There's movie. a lot more to it than that. <laughs> There's a lot more, but that's a good way to get people uh, hooked on the quick IMDb summary. Oh, man. So first time, when did you see this? A couple days ago? Yesterday. Oh, yeah. He saw this yesterday. I saw this <laughs> uh, Thursday. Before we get into the plot, how was your audience? Uh, uh, really good. Uh, the yeah. audience, the audience sang. The audience loved it with, with that. The best part is like... That's the, that's the best kind of horror movie theater experience. It's, it's, it's a is group, the audience getting into it. group thing to, to, to go through this together. We all are here for one reason. We want to see some spooky shit on screen. Give us a little bit of nightmares and stuff like that. Those are the types of movie theaters I love to go to with with the audience. What sucks is when they're just talking about everything. Uh, I saw this at my local theater mm -hmm. uh, near where I live, and uh, it it ended up being it was a small theater, but mm -hmm. it ended up being like a pretty good crowd. That's good in it uh, for as early as I went to it for, mm -hmm. uh, especially to just the jump scares. Oh my god, movies, just, like, movies people, like just sing. laughing and what so, this has some jump scares. It really does, yeah. but like you you'll. You'll be fine. Don't worry. They're it's not, not like shitty two th early 2000s horror jump scares either. These feel earned. And, and I'm, I'm willing are, to give them this. And none of them are as traumatizing as like, I don't know, the lawnmower scene in Sinister. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> um, we both had great theater react. I'm I'm so glad I did. Like yeah. I was kind of hoping like, oh, I kind of hope I'm alone because I, I went alone mm -hmm. and I felt I always feel awkward when it's like a packed house. This is what was for talk to me, too. It's like oh, it was yeah. a packed house for talk to me. I was the I was like by myself. <laughs> oh, I don't care. I go I go by alone all the time. Horror movies, I feel like you know, movies in general are a communal thing, but especially horror movies like well done. They love like just having a reaction with everyone there while you all get to experience this and love it. It's a it's a very it's kind of like a like a show, like a concert, right? It yeah. exists in that moment. You're all there having that time and then it's done. And it's just kind of a, a good feeling. Communal is a good word. Mm. It really does make us all brothers and sisters, doesn't it? And it's yeah. us versus this movie. And this movie's winning. <laughs> now, uh, Osgood Perkins directed this. Yes. And interesting thing about Osgood Perkins, he is the son of Anthony Perkins, who famously played Norman Bates in all the Psycho movies. Even the 98 one. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Tried to sneak that one by. <laughs> There's so much layered into 
the family aspect of this as well. Yeah, he borrowed a lot from his own life to write this movie, apparently. Yes. Like, because, uh, unfortunately, Anthony Perkins, he took the fact that he was a closet homosexual to his grave. Yeah. Like, he, like, Barry Berenson. Barry Berenson? Yeah. Barry Berenson. Um, this is Osgood's mom. Yes. Okay. Kept that secret forever, like, up until he died, basically. Yeah. Tragic thing about her is she died in, like, the 9-11 attacks, too. Are, so. you, are you serious? Yeah. She she was on one of the planes that what? took the towers, man. <laughs> okay, but, okay. But, cut, we're going to come back. Okay, that's, that's crazy. Tragedy aside, he... I, I read an article that he very much was, it, it, a lot of what he wrote in this movie was inspired by the idea that parents t will keep their kids in the dark in their eye, in their mind for their betterment. You allowing, know? Allowing, allowed to grow up. Yeah. That phrase that comes back in the movie, allowed to grow up. Yep. That's definitely part. I mean, sorry to bring this up against Sopranos. Uh, David Chase uses his own mother as reference for Tony's mom and how controlling she is and manipulative. Mm. And he's like, he's like, this is like my mom. Is, is isn't it in many Saints of Newark? Isn't it Vera Farmiga? As his yeah, mother? yeah. <laughs> she plays. Uh, is she is she good? Uh, she she is good. But and I feel like that pertains to this because uh, Alicia DeWitt, Alicia Alicia Witt, Alicia Witt, Alicia Witt. The weirdest mom ever. Plays a mom. <laughs> plays a mom where there's it's weird, but it's also it's also just very depressing, right? It's always depressing in in this movie. It's in, in this this like wall of sadness is just mm. there, and you can't get through it. And it's in like it's coming out your ears, and it's all over the house that she's in, and it's just like it's everywhere. Yeah, it just permeates everything. This like sadness, darkness, and gloom that she seems to carry and and give out. Uh, for for a good reason. Yeah, yeah, for a good reason, which we'll we'll get a little bit into. The sound design is really what stood out to me in this movie. It, it, again, as I said, this movie is an assault on the senses yeah. from everything going. At the time that a lot of these, you know, 16 millimeter they show in there in the 70s is, is being filmed, we're getting a lot of rock bands using a certain technique for recording. And I'm sure you've heard of this before. So this technique is called back masking. Have you heard of this? So back masking is what they did where they would take a recording, whatever they did, they would put it onto a tape backwards so that when you played it forward, it sounded backward, mm. right? You know how like the, uh, you remember how the Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, each of the, uh, each of it ends with like somebody talking backwards yeah. and it's Maxwell Adams saying, no, 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 this is the end of the episode. You're supposed to go from the other side. Yeah. It's that technique. It's the same thing. You remember, you know, the Beatles, like Paul is dead controversy, right? Mm -mm. Oh, so this is actually a, a big thing. Back then, if you used to basically play vinyls backwards or record it backwards, you would hear things occasionally. Mm. So one of the things they people heard, I forget which song it was for the Beatles, whether it's Revolution or it's something else. If you play it backwards, it says Paul is dead. So it was like everyone had this controversy that Paul McCartney was actually dead and that he had been replaced. And oh they were trying to God. let everyone know. And it was a huge thing. There, the church was really fucking freaked out about it. There was huge uh, outcries for like Led Zeppelin and all these other bands about Satanism being recorded back all the way through. <laughs> and then everyone's like, everyone's like, Led Zeppelin's demonic. And I was, they're like, they're worshiping Satan. And I was like, Jimmy Page is doing bad things right now. You don't, he doesn't need to worship Satan. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. The sound designer, Eugenio Bataglia. Bataglia. Uh, he got into it and he was encouraged to kind of create soundscapes. Uh, I was reading a thing where around the idea of recording and like eight tracks and stuff like that, of how they would record onto them, mm -hmm. you know, for tape and stuff like that. So I was reading that he used a special 360 microphone to capture sound a lot, not a shotgun. The, the mics we have here are very uh, cardio, very, very pointed when we talk. That's why you can't hear me. Right now much. But th what did you say? Yes, this one. He's got a 360 microphone to kind of record around. So these soundscapes of, you know, Nick Cage doing his long leg things around where he feels like he's kind of following around your face. That's because he's going around the mic talking. Yeah, it feels very visceral and very unnerving. And the, especially with how he tends to use static and silence in his soundscape to draw tension and unnerve you. It feels like every frequency you can hear as a human, which is the 20 to 20 K of frequency is being played with by him. 
And it's almost, it, that's why I feel like when you're watching it, you're kind of unnerved because there's this unnerving feeling that they're putting into the soundscape, which is the same unnerving feeling people got when listening to these 70s artists that might have put stuff backwards on their tape. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what they were going for when they created this the sound design. He uh, Osgood Perkins says he wanted it to feel like the fear of Satanism is everywhere so that the set tape for this audio for this movie feels similar to a tape you might have heard listening to T-Rex. You know, the fear is everywhere. This is a really atmospheric movie. Yeah, and, it's, and again, an assault on the senses. Yeah. Really hyping on T-Rex as well. They put... They they put Mark Boland's face all over this fucking movie. <laughs> like the, it's the it's the image of him from 20th century boy, which is kind of like a negative, like darker, like the the outline around him is white, mm -hmm. and then like his hair and his face is you know black and like the the silhouette style. It's everywhere. It's in Nick Cage's basement you know, when he's there. I, I swear to God, when she looks at photos, it flashes on screen for like a second. Mark Bolin. Yeah, yeah. It's just like, it's Mark Bolin. Is Mark Bolin a serial killer? Is Again, Mark Bolin haunting this is movie? Is Mark Bolin <laughs> haunting this movie? <laughs> but again, it, it, he got, and I, I do want to say this story as well. Osgood Perkins, because he was super into T-Rex, I guess he had watched a documentary about Mark Bolin and T-Rex for it. And he was, he was just listening to the idea of the uh, bang a gong, get it on. He specifically cites how the teeth of the Hydra upon you sounds so rhythmic. And Hydra mentions the same as Revelation multi-headed monster, mm -hmm. right? And that's what he's talking about. He said that when he was talking to Nick Cage, apparently on a phone call, when Nick Cage was like, well, I don't know if I'm going to produce this. You know, I'm thinking about, I want to, you know, maybe I could be long legs or something like that. And he said, Nick Cage is like, well, I know he's, I know he's a music guy, so he was saying, hey, it's, it's he's like based on like this character I'm looking for you to play is based on a musician. And then Nick's like, I thought it was like that. Who is it? And he goes, it's T-Rex. It's Mark Bolin. He goes, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> <laughs> so it said it. And then I guess he said also, he was like, I was just teaching my, Mark, Nick Cage was like, I was just teaching my son to play reversed guitar solo at the end of Cosmic Dancer. Mm. which is another T-Rex song, which is pretty good. He's like, yeah, I was just teaching you how to play it. And so Osgood Perkins was like, it's meant to be We're your, your, your long legs. Channing Tatum from Tony on Jump Street, just like, hey, you want to be friends? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so it, 70s music and 70s, I don't know, nostalgia, hysteria around music and Satanism, especially the music thing, like codified into or manifested into on-screen pictures. Mm -hmm. This, this, this movie. And again, what does T-Rex have to do with any of it? Not really. Not a, a goddamn not, not thing. Not really a really? lot at all. But you know what? They're in there. <laughs> and you know what? Even though this movie ends bleak, you'll be jamming out when you walk out of the theater. Because <laughs> they do play Banger Gong, get it on. <laughs> Besides Nick Cage, do you know who else was? He was like, this is the only other actor I would want to play Long Legs. Zach Galifianakis. No. Uh, <laughs> this would be an interesting one. Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt can do crazy. Yeah, he can. I've seen him do crazy. He, he's I mean, he's fantastic in 12 Monkeys. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. He's 12 yeah, Monkeys. He's like, really good. In, he, like, I, I believe that. 12 Monkeys, yeah. He's, he's got kind of an image. He's got kind of that cool guy image to him, yeah. though. Last thing I say, and th this is actually really, really cool, besides the fact that they didn't want to show Nick Cage in any of the promotional material, if you look at trailers and like... Uh, uh, you can hear him. He talks. He talks and posters. He's not in this. They no. do not show his face. They only show him kind of in a, like an out silhouette or maybe his mm -hmm. hands, like anything like that. Did you know that they kept left uh, Make a Monroe in the dark about what he looked like? I did hear that. Yeah. yeah. So the first time they say, and this is a spoiler, they the last scene they shot, their only scene really together is... When they're have, he's having his interrogation, she had no idea what he looked like. I wonder if she was even aware that it was Nick Cage. <laughs> <laughs> that, but she didn't know. Who did, you, who did you cast for long legs? I'm not telling you. Oh, you'll see. <laughs> you'll know. No, I'll never tell. Yeah, I'll never tell. <laughs> Is it Nick Cage? <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> All right, fine. But apparently she didn't know. No, no, it's, it's Brad Pitt. She didn't know. She didn't know, and she went into the interrogation. It's also apparently Nick Cage's last day on set, yeah. and Nick Cage just does his Nick Cage thing as, yeah. as that. And apparently, they had a microphone 
you know, in her shirt, but it was also capturing her heartbeat. And it went from like 67 to 170. Oh my God. Was because she was like so stressed. She's during kind of scene. nervous around yeah, them. They're having this like actual breakdown and they took that heartbeat and they played it in the trailers. A couple of it. Oh uh, yeah. That's that was her. one of the promotional things. Yeah, yeah. It's her heartbeat. He's like, he, the way he acts in this movie mm-hmm. is like, he can't contain his excitement. Yeah. You remember when you were a kid and something made you really excited, like Mm. made you really like super hyped and happy because you knew it was about to happen. You remember that audience? You know where you're about to get into and you kind of would, you know, good. Oh, yeah. You know, you kind of do that. That's him. If he just stayed at that peak of just because he talks like this through the movie, you know, (laughs) he's he's giddy. You know, he can't. Yeah, he can't contain his excitement for most of it. And he's just like he's like a decibel away from just going yeah basically you know (laughs) yeah oh my god you're right there's another funny thought what he's got really long hair in this Mm -hmm. and he's got really long hair in con air Mm -hmm. can you imagine if it was that this nick cage was in con air (laughs) yeah oh my god he's the this nick cage has to save the day (laughs) what the fuck (laughs) yeah you're not taking this plane away (laughs) We're getting into the movie here, so we're going to start talking about spoilers. Here's your warning. Uh, Three, two, one. I want to talk a little bit about the plot. I don't want to go all the way through it, but I feel like we can talk a little bit. No, you take this. So this movie opens. First of all, I think it opens specifically stylistically ratio of the 16 millimeter. Uh, Yeah. I think it does. It does with because it's not four. It's not three. It's not four by three because the edges are rounded like film. The edges are rounded like film. You're supposed to watch it like a home movie. Yeah, it's supposed to be like a home movie. But when you see it on like the normal 16 by 9 screen, you're like, that's a lot of black screen on each side. <laughs> see it when you, when you watch it. It's a home movie. Like yeah. this. What is this, Wes Anderson? Yeah, yeah you're just <laughs> watching it. it. And it opens with a quote. Before we even get the home movie, we, it opens with a quote. And that quote is... Is all that we see or seem no. a dream within a dream. <laughs> it's, well, you're slim, you're weak... You got the teeth of a Hydra upon you. You're dirty, sweet, and you're my girl. And that's a ly- lyric from Banger Gong, Get It On by T-Rex. A very, very well-known psychedelic rock band of the 70s. And you would think that this means something, but it doesn't. It really does not. No. <laughs> the rest, this movie has absolutely no relation to this quote at all. Except that Osgood Perkins is telling us that the lead singer of <laughs> T-Rex is a serial killer. That's what he's telling us every time. <laughs> <laughs> if anything, it just, it reminds you T-Rex is a thing. Go listen to them. Yeah. <laughs> in, in all seriousness, Osgood Perkins has cited T-Rex as, as this song as being a main inspiration for this movie. Regardless of anything, this movie opens with a quote by T-Rex. And then we get kind of a introduction in the normal 16 millimeter style of a little girl meeting someone that drove a station wagon there. Meeting her fairy godmother. (laughs) Might as well fucking be. She meets, and we'll get to kind of see it a little bit later, she meets Long Legs, who is a serial killer, even though he never actually goes into the house. You find that out later. Uh, Played by Nicolas Cage. Now, Nicolas Cage in this movie... (laughs) You know what I had? You know the thought I had? What? Was, wouldn't it be great if this came out before Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent? Oh, so that, like, this, this, this character is now canon within the Cage Rage universe? No, not just that, but also, what if, like, in that movie, mm-hmm. the Nick Cage in that movie, he would hallucinate, like, a younger version of himself? What if this was the version oh, he hallucinated? No. Now, this... I don't really th- know what to do. I think you should... Go do it, man. <laughs> now, I do want to say this is clear that it's Nick Cage by the way it acts in his voice. Like, it's clear it's Nick Cage, but it does not. Li- the, the makeup they have on him is very. <laughs> he looks like Eric Stoltz from Mask. I'm sorry. <laughs> he looks like Eric Stoltz from Mask. I was going to say <laughs> Nick Cage in this movie looks like Emperor Palpatine doing whiteface. Yeah, (laughs) it's the way I would describe him. Yeah, Nick Cage in this movie, he looks like every Michael Myers mask from all the Halloween movies. Layered on top of each other. (laughs) Molded into one, basically. (laughs) 
Nick Cage looks like Gene Simmons if he like chipmunked his cheeks up <laughs> and like shoved it full of like if he took his massive tongue and just stuck it around his cheeks. Nick Cage in this movie, he looks like Michael Jackson if he got stung by a bunch of bees yes. on his face. <laughs> He's, he looks ridiculous. He does. He, he he there's a reason they don't show him, and it's unfortunately this might be a little criticism from me. It's unfortunately because he doesn't look scary. He looks really funny. He, he looks, looks funny. He he looks like a clown who forgot the rest of his face paint, basically. Yeah. Like yeah. he 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 put on the white and then he and then he's like, oh, I'm late. I got to go. Yeah, I gotta, <laughs> you know, I got I to gotta go. get to this birthday party. I got to get to the birthday. Yeah, but he 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 doesn't. <sighs> yeah, he's the way they shoot him is unnerving. The mm-hmm. way he acts is creepy. But mm-hmm. when they, they show his face more later, mm-hmm. sure, it's creepy. It's not scary. In yeah. fact, it gets it's funnier the more you look at him. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. like they might have done a little too much to him. In this. Yeah, it, it definitely can. And, and we, you know, they, they take him out like they, you don't see him until later, it, you know, in the beginning of the movie, which is smart. You know, he's always shot out of frame. His, face, his head is above frame. You only see his like torso, yeah, especially right? in, in that this, opening scene, in this opening scene where he says he, he, he wore his long legs today, even though that is his name. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this uh, is what he calls himself, which he calls himself long legs. I forget the character's actual name. Uh, he, he does have a name. He has a gift for uh, this little girl. And he says, I wore my long legs today. And he bends down and we get cut immediately to the title card of long legs. And you start in st- the movie lets you know, hey, we're not going to do like the, the 16 millimeter thing for the whole time, because as the, the credits start to roll to start it, they start making the frame wider <laughs> while they're playing a rock tune while they're playing a, a rock tune, which is which one do they play in this? It's T-Rex. I just don't know which song they play. But Lee Harker is our main character, and we we cut to her. She's like she's she's Clarice Starling, basically. She's Clarice like, Starling. Yeah, she's, she's, she's Clarice Starling. She's a uh, she's a new Special agent, FBI agent, whatever. And with, with some special abilities. With She's a little Stephen King kid is she, what she, she she's is. She's shining. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she, what she is. She's, she's shinning a little she's bit. She's shinning a little bit. But um, she, she, she has psychic. this psychic ability, and uh, that is conveyed when she and her partner have to go door to door looking for like another serial killer. Yeah. Unrelated to the other one. And she gets out of the car, and she just looks at a house, and she goes, That's that. He's, He's in that there. One. It's in that one. He's in there. And the partner's like, okay, goes up to the front door. The door is answered and he starts talking. He just gets John Wick in the head, dude. <laughs> Immediately. He's just like, huh? Well, well way to start were, the movie. Well, you were right. <laughs> way, way, way to start the movie. She is commended for this. She's like, you found him. You've, you've got the fucking guy. We got him. She brings him in like, you know, at the, you know, cost of her partner's life. But, yeah. <laughs> but um, she is brought on to yeah. the long legs case yes. because this case has been ongoing for quite a number of years. I think like over, what is it, like a decade or two? A couple of decades. A couple I decades. Yeah. They, they can never do it. They can never figure it out because what long what happens to long legs is... Every single one is... The family kills each the, other. The, the, the dad kills the family. The dad kills the family. The dad kills the family and it's unexplainable they can't figure it out yep uh, they, they ki- kills the whole family and the kids and then that's it boom and and some and i'm assuming long legs just drops off an envelope after and just throws it into the house and he's like see ya when lee's decoding all of the that stuff obviously it's a reference to the zodiac killer as well which is the 70s as well mm-hmm. late 60s mid 70s and that was bay area la area yeah the, the zodiac killer was no fucking joke like they never caught him even though he could have been Ted Cruz. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we want answers. We want answers, Ted. <laughs> the thing about that made it still hard to decode the Zodiacs thing is this guy was like just dumb as shit. So it's like he can't fucking spell. <laughs> so so they can't decode it because there is no actual logic to it because they're like he's misspelling. Either he's misspelling on purpose or he doesn't actually know how to spell things. And apparently that was like an influence for this where Lee is like, what the fuck? <laughs> 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 You're going to kiss her? Oh, kill her. Oh, okay. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> yeah, Blair Underwood, he's the he's her boss yeah. in this. Agent yeah. Carter is it Carter? Agent Carter. Agent Carter. He's he's fun in this. He's yeah. like he's yeah, he's the Scott Glenn character basically from mm-hmm. Silence of the Lambs. He's yeah. just like Clarice. What did you find out? You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but in this, he's funny. He's uh he has his moments. Um 
uh, he sees potential in her. He's just like, why don't we bring you on and see if anything comes hey, out of this little psychic girl? That because we tested because <laughs> they test her and they figure out like, wow, you are clairvoyant as fuck. Make a Monroe in this is she plays it like just like the quiet kid you don't want to. You don't, wanna, you don't want you don't want to eat next to this girl either. Like, yeah, it's yeah. Just, something's up. Something's yeah. off. Yeah. Not that she's rude or anything. She's just extremely quiet. She's very awkward in social situations. And she doesn't drink. And she doesn't drink. What a square. What a nerd. Come a long way from Independence Day resurgence. <laughs> Is she in that one? <laughs> oh my god. I only know her from It Follows. That's the that's the honest truth there. She's in the guest also. Have you seen the guest? That one's a lot of fun. Oh, yeah, yeah. She is in that one, isn't she? Yeah. As soon as they bring her on, she starts figuring shit out. And she starts kind of having, like, these little episodes, too. Mm -hmm. And uh, we do want to say, too, she seems to have, like, a connection to this case. More so than just, like, hey, I want to solve it. She seems somehow involved with it. Yeah. Something's in, she's involved deeper. More which, than she wants to be. <laughs> yeah. This is the movie. She's trying to solve... Who is this person killing all these families? How's and, he doing this? And too? she's using her psychic ability to like glean information. And there just seems to be a lot of twists and turns in this maze. And there's no good answer. But it, we kind of get the sense that somehow she's connected deeper. And especially something is wrong with her upbringing. And that's because of Alicia Witt. As, as her mom. mom. As her mom. And again, we talked about this, the girl from Sopranos. So she, she plays this character, her mom, Lee Harker's mom, that is just so, as we talked about, it's just so depressing. Yeah, it's she's just so oppressive and heavy. She clearly is not right. Something's clearly wrong with her. I think how she thinks about things. She's clearly a hoarder as well. Oh, that house is full of crap. Yeah, dude. she's a hoarder. She doesn't throw anything away. And she seems to be very focused on the innocence of Lee. Mm -hmm. Like the, she, 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 it's like she wanted to keep Lee as a kid. Yeah. Forever. And she didn't want she'll Lee forever to see her as her little girl. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, all parents do that, but not when you don't let them go forward. And it seems like it's got it's put a strain on the relationship because because you can tell Lee shows a lot of emotion when she is around her mom. Yeah, like she, it's the only like, time she does. Yeah, it really does. Yeah, yeah. She there's there's uh, the way Alicia Witt plays this is just so enthralling. It, it gives you the idea that like this parent is manipulative, but also this parent is clearly mentally unwell. Yes, there's clearly something wrong, like something is clearly, clearly wrong. And there needs to be like some kind of rectification in order to move forward. But I, I really thought she was one of the most standout performances. She's as well. great. She I pulls, loved her. Like this. she pulls you in as Lee's mom into this like darker world. And she really hits on the idea with Lee that you were allowed to grow up. You were allowed. I protected you from all the darkness. Alicia Witt plays this where she protected Lee growing up. She absorbed all the darkness and dangers of the world out there. And now it's like she almost like this, this is what is I kind of guilt tripping. Yeah, it's yeah. guilt tripping. It's like I absorbed all that darkness for both of us. You were allowed to be a kid and not have to worry about it. And it's like, oh God, you have no idea what came to us. You basically. have no idea what I took for both of us. Yeah. yeah. It's an interesting dynamic and something like I think Osgood Perkins really, really hit on of all the different types of toxic relationships with your parents. This is a unique one. And I don't know if I've seen this portrayed well on film before. Because from the minds of a parent, they're doing it for their kids. They're doing it for the betterment of their kids. Like you can be you. You don't have to worry about these things. Yeah. If I take the hits or if I keep you in the dark on mm -hmm. these things. But I do find that really interesting that I'm sure all of our parents have done that. Oh, yeah. Have have essentially lied to us about something. Yeah. Keep just us. to, you know, just to keep that kind of innocence. In no, us. Santa is real. Santa is real. <laughs> I mean, well, that's that's the yeah, yeah. that's the opposite of the extreme yeah, 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 of this yeah. movie. You know what I mean? <laughs> to quote the worst to die hard. Mm. Bruce Willis at one point when he's about to save his son mm. does just give a decent one liner. And that one liner is the shit we do for our kids. The shit we do for our kids. And I really thought about that line watching this movie. <laughs>
Yeah. Should we get into the facts section? Do it. All right. These are real facts. It's like one or two facts I found about the movie and researched. Uh, I don't even think it's more than one fact. It might just be one fact. You got the other facts in the in the regular series. So Nick's going to read it for you. And uh, again, real facts, just with some uh, other stuff included. Long legs fact section. Fact number one. Long legs was released July 12th, 2024 to a $22.4 million opening weekend. It's earned a total of $32 million domestically so far and $2 million internationally. Some of its competition this summer includes Maxine, starring Shia LaBeouf's wife. <laughs> yeah, I forgot. Yeah, are they married? Yeah. <laughs> They're married, yeah. yeah. Twisters, starring Sabrina the Teenage Bitch. <laughs> and finally, Despicable Me 4, starring Joey King. That's right, she is. Yeah, yeah it's a Despicable Me 4. I saw Despicable Me 4, and Joey King in that movie, she's actually really funny because she's... He's doing like a Jimmy Jr. Yeah. fucking lisp with like everything he said because her character has braces. Oh my goodness. It's actually really funny. She dances to like Dragon Force at one point in the movie. <laughs> do the fire and flames. Is that what they yes, play? Yes, they do. Everything's just a meme now, isn't it? Uh, Kieran and Shipka um, is Sabrina the Teenage Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. She's in Long Legs too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She's, uh, she's like this mental patient that uh, oh, Lee has to yeah. go visit. Oh, yeah, I forgot that that is her. Yeah. Good for it. I'm glad it's made money. So Long Leg's budget was a little under $10 million, So it's made, enough, it's made a lot back. Yeah, good for it. I mean, this, take, take note, studios. You can save money by stylizing it and just getting the right people. Yeah. Like, you can save money. And even if it, like, doesn't do as well... Even if it only makes 20 million worldwide, you made 10 million. Unfortunately, it's all about trust, but yeah. um, there's not a whole lot of that going around anymore these days. No. Well, especially in Hollywood. Not if you're going to use AI, you fucking idiots. Did you get the trailer for that AI movie in what, front of this? Which the, one? The, the Afraid movie? No. With John Cho? No. It's like an AI takes over his house or something. Oh. It just looks like that American Dad episode, basically. <laughs> that, that, that's, that's Smart House. That's a Disney movie. This is like Smart House if it Blumhouse did it. <laughs> because Blumhouse did it. <laughs> because Blumhouse did it. <laughs> oh my god. Nick, would you like to take top movies of 2024 so far? Top movies domestically, 2024. Hmm. Inside Out. Is number it, one. Yeah, Inside it, Out 2 is number one. It's the first one that's grossed over a billion. Mm-hmm. Godzilla Kong did pretty well. Did? Uh, it's not on there, though. Oh, domestically? domestically? Domestically. 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 Always domestic. I mean, internationally, we can talk about it, but we focus on domestic. Uh, Dune? Dune was number two. Dune's correct. number two. Dune part two, number two. Number three. Despicable Me? Is yeah, that Despicable Me 4 is number three. Good oh, job. Oh, nice. Damn, okay. You're on a roll here. Number four. Is it Kung Fu Panda? No, you, you're almost there, though. Uh, Godzilla X Kong, the new one. I Empire, thought you said it wasn't. Is number four. Oh, number I thought four. you said it wasn't on the list. No, I said it will be, but it's not there yet. Number five is Kung Fu Panda. Yay! Kung Fu Panda. Uh, <laughs> R.I.P. Tenacious D. Right. <laughs> Six is Bad Boys Ride or Die. Oh, yeah, that's right. That did do uh, really well. Seven is Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Kingdom of the Rise of the Dawn of the Rambo First Blood Part 2. <laughs> Part 2. Uh, we're going to skip down a little bit. Long legs, <laughs> so Long Legs is number 22 and has already beaten Night Swim. Not like that was hard. But <laughs> what the fuck is Night Swim? The pool is what? haunted. What? The pool. <laughs> the what? The pool is haunted. <laughs> you never seen Night Swim? Did you? I yeah, I saw parts of it. I actually torrented a bit of it I, just I, so I it's okay. The pool was this the, a January release? I think so. The pool. Okay. The pool okay. is is haunted. Don't go into the pool. That's Night Swim. Oh, okay. <laughs> now I know what you're asking. Can't I just not go into the pool? Well, you would think that. Can't I move away? You also would think that. Can't I just like, I don't know, get a cover <laughs> or like maybe fill in the pool? You'd also be incorrect. You can't do that either. Uh, yeah, those are, the, those are the top movies. And uh, Long Legs is, like I said, currently sitting at number 22. So I imagine it'll be on its way up for the next couple weeks. It could climb. Yeah, it, pro it probably will. I mean, it, it doesn't have much to go. It's at 32 uh, totally domestically. And I imagine it will pass. It will pass both The Strangers Chapter 1, which is only 35. Madam Web is 43. And it might even make it to Argyle, which is 45. Mm -hmm. 45. Uh, Challengers is 50. There you go. All right. Shall we rate? Yep. 
So, like I said, this is very unique and stylized. I enjoyed my time watching it very immensely. I love yeah, the audio too. design. I think the, the the story itself, the plot, is very easy to to see. Like, you, you, yeah, like, it is. If you watch movies at all, you'll see this coming like a mile away. But that's that's not a bad thing. But I, I feel like the, for a long time now, there has been an attempt for the audience to try to subvert the audience's expectations. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Scream 6 has a whole thing about that, right? Yeah. Where the only thing, to, the only real way to subvert the audience's expectations is to do exactly the most obvious thing now. Who gives a fuck about movies? Who gives a fuck about movies? Not this podcast. So anyway, so this movie, uh, I'm going to go ahead and give this an 82. 82. That's good. Um, I'll do 84. 82, 84? All right. I had a lot of more fun with this than I thought I would. Mm. Going into it, I did kind of think like, eh, maybe it's a little overhyped. We'll see. But I do, I appreciated the, uh, the tightness of the story and the telling and the way it was told, how stylized it was. The performances did grow on me, even though they're, you know, I'll say this again. I'll, yeah. I'll say that. I'll say this. I'd again. like to. I I wouldn't mind watching this again. This is just a nice little atmospheric chiller. Absolutely. Check this one out for sure. Absolutely. That's an eighty-three for long legs. Go see it. We highly recommend it. And uh, let us know what you thought about it down below in the comments, right? And if you are interested in that sound design thing, look up more on it. It's it's really really cool. And uh, as somebody that studied a lot of sound in school, sound designers don't always get that much praise. Because mm -hmm. it's unless you and it, you don't notice it unless it's bad or it really or you, you're kind of trained to look for or you're it. looking for it. A lot of people, I, I'm sure, walked out of long legs and had the same feeling I did. But it's just like, why do you feel that? They don't way, know right? how to describe yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's a lot of it is just the sound design. <laughs> it yeah. really fucks with you, man. We're we're auditory creatures too, as much as we're visual. We need that that sound scares you. Bye, everyone. Hail Satan. <laughs>